What's happening, boys and girls? How the devil are we? Shanksy here, and today I've got a raid boss video for you. Everything you needed to know about getting started in raid boss, the things I have learned in my first 60 levels, and some things that I've gained off other players far more experienced than I have along the way as well. So I'm going to share all that information with you right now. So let's get into it. Right then, boys and girls, let's get into this one. So, everything that I have learned over the course of playing this game for just over a week, maybe two weeks, but I've been grinding pretty damn hard on it, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to hopefully share some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that's going to help you on your path to beating all these raid bosses, right? So, without further ado, let's start tip number one from the top left of the battle pass is absolutely amazing even if you haven't picked up the whole battle pass and you're just getting these standard rewards up here, keep an eye on it. There's some really, really good rewards up there that are worth doing. And some of the XP missions are very, very easy to do. Have a little check on it. For example, tank 100k in a super shield. You can go into the early doors of Clone Tower and don't farm to your highest bit. Do what you like, do the early doors. And just put in a super shield formation until you've tanked the 100k damage over the course of the next few fights. Big XP, big rewards off the battle pass. And if you are going to spend a little bit of money on the game, picking up the battle pass is not a bad shout. Right, going on to that. This is probably one of the key, key, key things. Is level up your guildies evenly. Or as evenly as you can now it's very easy for experienced players and people that have been playing a long time and have managed to rank up their guildies as and when they go type thing where sometimes you're leveling up your guildies it's all too all over the place what i've done is i've broken them into basically two separate teams i've got my main 15 as it were um that are now all gear tier eight going on to gear tier nine and then i've got my secondary set that are all at the same level the reason why i'm doing that is when i'm farming gear for say for these guys if i want to go find gear bosch hydra and then again for for this guy find gear bosch hydra if i drop a bit of gear which is a full bit of gear from the hydra and it gets broken down it's it's like a tenth of the resources that actually require to craft that bit of gear. So it makes a lot more sense if you're farming that boss, you get a full bit of gear, need or greed, and it goes on to who actually needs it, as opposed to getting broken down for that. So keep your main set as, as high as possible, obviously, and then your secondary set, you really want them fairly close to your main set. You know, it's going to be impossible, right? There's, there's going to be things like, for example, tool shed is by far my highest character because i'm focusing on getting her abilities done and dusted first right the the abilities are so few and far between or, or so time gated i'm going to be doing one character at a time when it comes to ability shards when it comes to gearing i want everyone at the same level i want everyone within touching distance of each other um so i can gear them up a lot easier there's also other reasons for that so one of the other reasons for that is going to be your challenge class challenge abilities so every day you get the challenges that are opened up um that will start every day you've got the gold challenge that's one every day and then you have a chance to go through this this requires for light dps requires five built up for medium dps requires five for range dps requires five magic dps four tank uh ones is three and support also requires three built out so having those all around the same level is going to make your life a lot easier and the higher that you can grind these the higher that you can farm these the more abilities that you can get every day and the more ability mat sorry that you can get every day and the more that you can put back into your guildies keeping them all relatively uh relatively leveled the second reason for this as well is the epic characters now i've got no epic characters as of yet but i am on my way i am on my way so for the queen of diamonds you require spicy meatball uh foxy moxie uh status um mysterion and Crito, all at five stars now at the moment i've got no one five stars but you need to be leveling up everyone 
together to be able to get that. So for those, you need those. For Clint the Man, you need Willow, uh, Long Long, MW, which is Muscle Wizard, um, Row 3, and Guest, all at five stars. For Lad, you need uh, DSK, which is Dark Shadow Killer. What a name. What a name. Uh, friendly Dude, um, uh, a cat, Tsubasa, and Alexa. And then for Clyde, you need Healers Adjust, you need Sailor Goon, you need Pink Lady, you need Mr. Darcy, and then you need Sterling Still, who you can get on the Battle Pass at the moment. Um, so you need those guys at five star before you can start unlocking these epic guildies, as it were. Also, the Clone Tower. Now, I want to go into a little bit more about the Clone Tower. The Clone Tower is a really, really, really great way of getting XP potions every day. You can pay 50 gold to farm up to your highest previous floor and then just carry on, which is a really good way if you're only using your main people. But, but, if you've got a little bit more time on your hands, focus on people's loyalty missions. If they've got any type of loyalty missions that can be done very easily in the early stages of the of the clone tower, go through that extra little bit of time, let them run, you can put it on times four speed, you don't have to control anything, it will do it for themselves, and it will start knocking out their loyalty missions as quick as possible. The quicker that you knock out these loyalty missions, every time that you get shards for these people, you get more shards so you can all of a sudden start ranking them up a lot quicker just off the basis of having their loyalty marked out. Do not forget about loyalty. On that mention, while we're talking about loyalty, guys and girls, I would be remiss to say that the Show Some Love content creator program is still running. If you are playing and as of date of filming, the 21st is still running. If you are over level 12, go to your store. Go across to the events tab. You will see Shanksy in the middle over here. Spend that ticket on Shanksy and you will get a rare tank healers adjust and a ton of other goodies as well. While we're doing that, we're going to make sure we are spending our event tokens on all of these things. Just save me farming. It saves me a little bit of energy. And uh, there's some... Big mats actually up here. We're going to actually start saving uh, some of them ones up there for the class mats. That goes on to my next thing. So for the class mats, guys, there are events that come up absolutely all the time. You see this red item clash right here, magic DPS. If you can get yourself in there and attempt to farm it out, get those rewards as and when they come. I've got a feeling later on in the game, the class mats are going to be a very big choke point. So get them as you can if your roster's high enough. Next thing I would definitely recommend, you is win or you learn. What does that mean, Shanks? Well, it's up on every martial arts dojo across the world. It's one of those real powerful sayings. I think first said by one of the Gracie brothers, you win or you learn. Sometimes you will go for a boss and it just takes a while to get the mechanics down. Don't lose heart. Your, your guys are probably powerful enough. All right. But it's probably going to be human error. You win, you learn. With the Hydra, for example, it probably took me about three or four attempts to understand the mechanics. Once I understood the mechanics, boom, I got it done on the next fight. Only two starred it. My very next fight, I come back and I three starred it. You win or you learn. Don't lose hope. The other thing that I want to mention, guys and girls, is do not forget the Holy Trinity. Say what, Shanks? The Trinity? No, not that guy. Yes, the Holy Trinity i.e. a tank, a healer, solid DPS, right? It works wonders, and it's going to get you through a large majority of the content just focusing on those three guys alone, and then some backup afterwards. Other than that, another thing that I wanted to mention is don't forget your formations. Now, formations and tactics in this thing are two different things. If you go onto your arena, you are going to be looking at, I believe it's called tactics right so if you go on to i haven't actually got an attack i believe it's called tactics um which is over here where to be honest it should be formation because it's more the formation of that but your tactic or your formation is actually up in the top now if you go on towards a mission or if you're going on towards any normal dungeon any storyline bit anything like that you're going to look for your formation now 
Where we go into it, we'll go on a story. We'll go on to, I don't know, 6-1. We don't actually need to fight it. My formation at this point in time is the Magic Slingers. Now, if I was to change that and I wanted a different buff... Making sure I have these three roles within the team allow me to get that bonus. So, for example, if you wanted to shoot uh, damaging projectiles periodically, fireworks, three magic DPS. Hard to kill. Healing grounds, um, ground circles appear every few seconds. One tank, two healers. Getting that formation down is going to allow you to get through a lot of the trickier content. I like magic slingers. And I also like Powered Rangers with the uh, the critical damage increases significantly. But Horses for Courses, make the best use out of your guildies, but make sure you're getting the right formation in there. Being in an alliance. If you have voted for hashtag Team Shanksy, uh, search for the alliance, the Wolfpack. If not, there's a ton of other beginner alliances out there. And we are starting to do some alliances, uh, alliance raids Basically, every day where we're starting to go through the, the motions, we're on the easy one at the moment. I think we're going to be jumping up next time. There are basically every time that you do your dailies and everything like that, you're going to get these things for your alliance. And then you can do more raids. As of the back of that, more raids. You're getting more gear. The back of more gear. You're going to level up your guildies quicker. It speaks for itself. Right. The next one that I want to talk about is is alliance raids if you are doing a raid and i hopefully i can get in there to show you about that or oh i can't get in there can i can i start another one i don't think i can start another oh i could start another one okay we're gonna start another one just so i could show you what you what we're talking about when we get into an alliance raid each guildy can be used once on a node but on the bosses you can use her for the the bosses. So, for example, and I'm literally quoting here, each guild can be used only once on the regular nodes, i.e., if you use Toolshed on the first node, she will not be available for any other nodes with the exception of the boss nodes. So, keep that in mind when you are picking your, your teams. And this is actually a really, really beneficial trick that I learned yesterday. You do not need to use a full party. For these alliance raids if you've your guys are strong enough as they are going into it do not waste a full party do not waste multiple guildies when maybe two or three would suffice and this is another another reason while leveling up so many of the guildies equally makes sense because if you've got i don't know a tank and a healer and maybe a dps maybe that three will do where as opposed to putting five in there because it's just going to walk through there right Weapon quests as well are absolutely huge and another benefit to having all of your guildies level it up equally. Now, every weapon quest will give you a recommended um, attack defense stat. Now, all guildies are differently. They all have these different, these different ones. So it is well worth having multiple people built up. So when it does get to some way where you need like purple and then orange shield... You've got someone there that can do that job a little bit easier. Rather than like maybe over-leveling them or power through in it, it's a much easier way of doing it. The other one is, what do I spend my arena tokens on? I actually found this really, really interesting. And uh, this is something I wanted to share with you guys as well. So, if you go to the item shop, you go to the arena shop, you will see that you can buy these guys. Now, these guys are only available once you've done the event. But you will need your arena shards to le level these up. On the flip side of that, you should be spending your arena tokens, in my opinion, on the characters that you've already got. But make sure that you've already done some loyalty quests for them. So, for example, if I pick up this one now, which I'm going to, as I've already got the loyalty shards, I'm actually getting two more shards as a result of that on top of my base five, which makes it so much easier to level up by focusing on those loyalty missions as and when. Once you get a character, once you get a new guildy come through, have a little look at them, go, right, bosh, proud Jaina, what does she need? I've got to defeat Sand Sludges and uh, Slimes 50 times. Well, okay, if I use her in the Daily Dungeon, she's going to be able to kill a lot of them and it's going to be absolutely fine. Use Ice Laser 35 times. That's her ability. So I could do this 
pretty much instantly if I wanted to knock her out and run her through Ice Dungeon 35 times, I could do that. As the leader, bosh, 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 you're laughing. And let it go with Online Warrior defeat the Ice Queen. That's something that's going to come on much later on. While you're doing that, once you do get them up to three loyalty shards, you actually get a uh, some pretty cool skins for them as well. So worth keeping in mind, do those loyalty shards and save your arena tokens for people that you've already got a little bit of loyalty in because it's going to help leveling them up, right? And the more that you level them up, the more that you're going to get them to five stars, the quicker that's going to happen, the quicker you're going to unlock guildies, the quicker you're going to progress through the content. It all makes sense. I know it does, baby. I know it does. Right. And the next one is for alliance tokens. What do I so save my alliance tokens on? You will need between 7,500 and 12,000s for the epic L4, which is him, obviously, there. You will need about 12,000 alliance tokens to fully unlock him. Save or buy the red slash pink class materials, especially if you're at the choke point for Clyde's chokers or the frost blade fragments consider picking up them so that would be what uh the pros recommend you spending your alliance tokens on personally save twelve thousand of them for a lad and then see spend the rest as and when on the uh on the tokens down here because this is going to be a big 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 time lock guys a big time lock one more thing before I get off, and I think this is a really, really, really important one as well, guys, is your daily dungeon. Do not neglect, do not neglect the damp the dungeon buff on the right hand side. Daily dungeon buff damage only increase health, attack, and heal power by 100 percent for anyone that's got the uh the light damage sign. But this can sometimes be for individual characters, and the bonus can be as much as up to 400 percent Keep an eye on what this is, and using those characters will certainly help you prog progress further in the daily dungeon. Another pro tip for you, and this is a bit of a cheeky one. If you think you're about to wipe, quit, and it will give you that floor. So, for example, on the boss here, I got up to, it would have been technically 34, but because the boss started beating me up, I still had one guy left. Bosh! Quit out of it, and it gives me floor 35. So, bit of a cheeky one. But it's well, 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 well worth keeping that in mind. Other than that, guys, be using your normal energy um, for farming up gear, for farming up whoever you need, really. Think about all of the uh, the things that we've already talked about. Thinking about keeping your guildies in line with one another. Use your normal energy for farming out the, uh, the mats. Use your boss energy for farming out the bosses and for looking for main bits of gear. Now... You can do this two ways. You can either be focusing on your top team or what I've been liking to do, guys, is actually working from the bottom of my roster and trying to find the gear for the bottom people um, as opposed to the top people because I want to keep everyone in order as and when we progress, right? So that's one thing that I've been doing and uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that helps you. Guys! If you found the video helpful, if you like it, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm, share it with your friends, share it with your dog, share it with your family members, anyone that you might find might benefit from a little bit of uh, a little bit of these type of uh, tips and tricks, as it were, for Raid Boss. I don't know about you guys, I'm thoroughly enjoying the game, really enjoying the progression system of it, um, feeling pretty good about my roster, loving the community, loving the mechanics of the raid bosses so uh yeah i look forward to making maybe some boss guides maybe some other things and um but for now this is everything you need to know these are your tips and tricks and i hope it helps progressing your roster forward until next time boys and girls take it easy